I need to show you a story. All right, we're going to go through an article together. It's over at The Conversation. And you may see this. It says, academic rigor, journalistic flair. Yes. You can just tell me in the comments what you think they mean by journalistic flair. I'm going to leave it open. But in any case, this article titled, Citizen Science Volunteers Are Almost Entirely White. And not to beat this to the punchline, but they consider that to be a bad thing. Don't ask me why. Okay, no. <laughs> as, they're, as they're putting right up front, 95%, that's the share of citizen scientists who are identified as white. Identified as, I love that phrase now. Okay. Every day, volunteers around the world contribute to scientific studies through citizen science. That's stuff like counting migrating birds, measuring precipitation, tracking outbreaks of COVID. Yep, all kinds of different volunteer tasks. It's just white people doing it, apparently. In a new paper published on June 22nd, 2022, in Bioscience, we surveyed data from 2016 to 2019 to better understand the demographics of citizen scientists. I don't think that picture is accurate, just so you know, because... Uh, it, that's not 95%. You know, I'm bad at math, but that's definitely not 95% white people. Anyway, yeah, I, I digress. You know, I, I do find a surprising amount of humor in this. I really do. It's like, can you imagine this, all right? Let's just pause for a second. Imagine you go and you volunteer somewhere, okay? And 95% of the volunteers appear to be black. What, and, and I'm just presuming that you're a white person. And you show up and you're like, there are too many black people here. How do we fix this? That's the that's the mindset of these people. All right, we're going to continue, but that's the way they think. All right, we'll go on. A few small studies have found that citizen science volunteers tend to be white, well-educated, and have high incomes. But this homogeneity of participants is common knowledge among researchers and few collect detailed demographic data. Yep, there you go again, 95%. Uh, identified as white. Participating in citizen science is linked to personal benefits like learning new skills and building community. If citizen science is only reaching educated white science professionals, then it's concentrating the benefits of participation among this group. Now you see, they're writing this as if some kind of injustice is taking place because there's a, there's a personal benefit to the volunteer work that they describe according to their belief system. And the only people who are getting the benefits are those who volunteer. Like, okay, but how is that the fault of anyone other than the people who don't volunteer? If you don't volunteer for an action, you don't get the benefits that come from volunteering. But that doesn't mean that there's institutional oppression somewhere saying, hey, only white people are allowed. Have you ever seen a volunteer ad that said whites only? Really? Have you ever seen a volunteer ad that said whites only who have a college education and high income? No, it doesn't exist. There is no institutional oppression here. When you're talking about volunteer tasks, it's anyone can volunteer. That's kind of how it works. You could argue that's what makes it a volunteer as opposed to an actual job description, which has very specific requirements, although they're not race related either, you know, but I digress. Let's go ahead and move on. Obviously, I highlighted some points here for us to go over, but th they then go on to talk about how we need to take specific steps in order to extract non-white people and pull them into volunteer positions that they're not interested in being in, or at least that they haven't actually volunteered for. And then I have to ask, why? Why is it a bad thing when white people dominate even in positive ways? And we're talking about volunteer work. Why can't we see that as a positive? Because throughout our society, and especially in places like academia and Hollywood, it's presented that any, anywhere where there's lots of white people, it's a bad thing. And now here you see also, it's still a bad thing even when they're actively volunteering to try to help out. Again, imagine going to the soup kitchen, you've got lots of different black volunteers, and you're like, there are too many black people here, how do we get more white people to volunteer? Can you imagine being that person? Uh, I can't, but I imagine that it wouldn't be well received. And yet, articles like this are considered to have, what was the phrase? Journalistic flair. I mean, I guess with modern journalism, you could argue that that's the case, yeah. But I do seriously worry about a society in which we're raising kids 
and literally they're white kids and telling them that you can do no right. You know, no matter what you do, you you represent some kind of oppressive force wherever you go. So you shouldn't try to succeed. You shouldn't even try to help other people because wherever you exist, it's a bad thing. And that's the message that's being sent from multiple, multiple different cultural outlets. The entire message there is is absolutely evil and should be stopped and should be pointed out wherever it happens. Wait, don't leave yet. I have more videos for you to watch. One of them is recommended by YouTube because you know how well it has built a profile of you. Yeah, and the other one's my most recent video so that you haven't already seen. So you can find something that you might enjoy. Also, there are links in the description below that'll help you to support the channel if you're so willing. And really, who doesn't want one of these mugs?